Hello and welcome to the Frequently Asked Questions section of the Pier City Circles Airbox Removal Video Series. As the title suggests, we are going to be going through all of the Frequently Asked Questions and everything that comes up in your inbox and my inbox. Regarding performance, we always recommend to customers to fit a Rapid Bike Evo in tandem with the airbox removal. Due to the increase in airflow that the pod filters give the engine, the Rapid Bike Evo brings up the fueling level to match this airflow. Bearing in mind it is an air-cooled engine. The air-cooled engines utilize and rely on heavily the fuel within the chamber to keep the engine cool. If you start to saturate this fuel in the chamber with excessive airflow and you don't bring the fuel level up, the engines don't particularly like it. They run fine and they, they do consider that the air is going in at a high rate, perform fine. However, if you want to make the most of the modification that you spent a lot of time doing, the Rapid Bike Evo really takes the bike to the next level. It increases the fuel, it gives you accessibility on maps and is an adaptive system. It really does take your bike to the next level and makes the most of the modification that you have spent a lot of time and money getting to this stage at. So regards the increase on noise and making the bike sound that much better, if you tandem it with a full flow exhaust system, the airbox removal, when tandem with the Rapid Bike Evo, does make it enhance in the sound because you have got a free flow and the engine is performing much, much better than it did when it came out of the factory due to the fact that all the restrictions have been lifted. Regards the actual noise of the bike directly from the airbox removal, you will now get some induction noise. It's a real sweet induction noise that you will get. It's nothing that you're going to be like, oh, I really noticed it like as a real change. You'll just notice it is it's an additional sweet sound that is part of the symphony of the BMW Boxer engine. It is possible to cut the airbox out instead of doing the full airbox removal process as per our video. We try to avoid suggesting to do that because basically we don't want to be responsible when you put a hacksaw through your frame, jib it up, and then you've got to powder coat it. So as a business, we're not going to sit there and say, yes, this is our recommended process. However, it is definitely possible when you do so, you just need to bear in mind you've got the air temperature sensor in the top of the air box, and once that is out, you can basically cut all the way through. In our tutorial, we do cover off the sort of key points of cutting it out. Again, we're not going to sit there and say, yes, cut it out, because then you might come on our doorstep when you mess your bike up. So regards to tuning the bike, you don't need to tune it if you've got the Rapid Bike Evo fitted. However, if you haven't got the Rapid Bike Evo fitted and you have just done the airbox removal, something you do need to do, which is kind of a tune, you must balance the throttles. There is only two cylinders on this bike. As obvious as that sounds to say that, they need to work in harmony and they massively rely on the synchronization of the throttle bodies being perfectly in sync. So please do not, as tempting as it is that you've gone all of this way, the tank's on, battery box is fitted, you've done all the hard work and you're really excited, you're putting your gear on, key and the ignition ready to go. Don't do that until you've balanced the throttles because all you're gonna do is be disappointed, plus the bike won't even run properly. So make sure you take the time at the end of the process, once the tank's down and the engine is running, to balance the throttles. You will not regret doing it. You will only regret if you don't. Yes, you can balance your throttle bodies at home. You do need to buy a special tool, which is the vacuum gauges. Now, if you are gone to the excessive lengths that is to do the airbox removal, then buying the vacuum gauges isn't gonna to be too far off of your radar due to the fact that I would imagine that you're gonna to wanna to do the servicing and maintenance of your bike at home. Having a boxer engine and a set of vacuum gauges is something that you're not gonna just use once, you'll use time and time again. Because like I said previously, the vacuum gauge will bring the throttle bodies into sync and the engine only has two cylinders. So the synchronization of the throttle bodies are vital to keeping the bike running sweet. So the battery box is going to locate on the inside of the tank. There's a little plate almost like shelf on the inside of the tank. The battery box will mount on the inside of the bike from there. Once you have removed the air box, it will become very, very obvious. Obviously, check this tutorial for where to drill that. It will need drilling in order to fit it. There is a couple differences between the two tanks, as in whether you have a non-roadster bike or a roadster bike. When I mean non-roadster, I'm talking the Scrambler, the Urban GS, the Pure, 
and the racer. They have steel tanks on them, so the shaft that Rory mentioned actually has a perimeter of metal around the outside of it. That's slightly different to the Roadster. Check the tutorial out, I go into thorough details on that. You can retain the scoop if you want to. Obviously the scoop mounts on the two uh, on the tank bracket that has two bolts at the back. You will need to uh, somehow secure the front. So what we do is cut the plastic snorkel underneath and then put a small P clip uh, around one of the oil hoses. You then need to put a screw through that in order to secure it at the front basically. So it's definitely doable, but it's also a little bit of a custom mod. If you don't want to go down that route, then we have a couple of products available. You can buy a carbon cover as part of the kit that will cover over the tank bracket, or we've just got some new um, scoops from JCR90. They're on the website as well, and you can pick one of those up. You do need something, in my opinion, to cover over both the tank bracket, and there's quite a large hole there where you can see a lot of the wires mm. and something. So having some sort of plan to cover something over there will make a neater job of it. Regards to filter choice, by far we swear by the DNA. The DNA filters are the closest that you're going to get to a factory fit. You can also use the original BMW factory clips that you took the pod pipe off with. I go into more detail on that on the tutorial, but by far the DNAs are the one to go to. Yeah, absolutely. DNA are run by a company uh, who own an R90 and they have been specifically designed to fit both onto the actual throttle body, but also to then be narrow enough that you can fit your knees around them. So they're a much, much better product. The third filter is there for the crank breather. So you'll find that on the air box, when you went to remove it, there is a pipe that goes from the left-hand cylinder or the base of the left-hand cylinder up to the air box. This crank filter, the smaller Eeny Deeny filter, goes onto the bottom of the crank case. That is there to breathe, allow the gases to breathe out and filter any oil particulates that come out of the, basically with the exhaust fumes of the uh, evaporative fluids from outside the engine. If you're in town or in a hot environment, so you do a lot of town riding, track riding or in a hot environment, use the tube that you took off for the airbox removal to extend that up so it sits just above the level of the gearbox, just in line with where the top of the trellis frame meets the rear frame. Cable tie it up to the top of the frame then and that will keep only the gas coming out of the filter and not any oil because what we found is for customers that are in town do a lot of town traffic and what we found on track yeah. with our track bikes is with the original filter sorry the crank filter that's supplied directly onto the case in there it does want to exhaust some liquid so you can mitigate that by using the tube that takes it up to the frame and when Stu says mitigate liquids he means an oil leak that's effectively yeah. what it is. It's not a leak. The filter just ends up like a sponge, basically. Yeah, correct, so yeah. All that oil trying to basically get out because it's expanded so much will have to have go somewhere. And what will happen is your filter is directly attached there on a hot day, pull out like a sponge. You then pull up. The bike is allowed to sort of cool down and then we'll be a couple of drips. So whilst it's not a, a, a leak as such, it's basically mm -hmm. spare oil that's going to sit there. So by extending that, you can eliminate that. Bear in mind, it will become saturated and it's not necessarily a product that is now useless if for example you think ah oh, you know i don't do a lot of town riding or the bike's just got hotter than what you realize and you haven't extended it because you don't have the time or necessarily the know-how or the trouble to do it if you do come across a little bit of oil leak that where the, the filters become saturated you can quite easily clean that out it's not something where it's like oh i need a new filter you can clean it out with some soapy water allow the filter to dry and then reapply some dna oil spray and you're good to go but just remember before you refit it extend the tube because that's why you're cleaning it bear in mind also that when you're sat on the side stand on the r90 the oil will pool on the left hand side so that can sometimes accentuate it another way of sort of getting around this is also by putting the bike on a paddock stand when it's parked up in the garage one other thing to note finally is if you go for the unit garage cylinder head covers do not have the filter directly fitted by default if you go for the unit garage cylinder head covers do extend the tube because the cylinder head covers are that much larger and there is a cnc edge on the inside where it's effectively square and not tapered like the r9 t heads the oil pulls on the inside and it by default drips out of there whether the bike is hot heavily used or track use so if you're fitting um, unit garage covers extend the tube by default so all of the filters that we supply with the kits, none of them are going to be waterproof. There are a couple of waterproof options out there. To be honest, we don't put them in the kits because they were whack. They really didn't. They, they were trying to fall off. You couldn't clamp them down properly. So 
As such, what we would recommend is going for some water resistant socks if you think that you're gonna be using it in climates where you might get caught out by a little bit of rain. The odd shower isn't gonna make any difference on there, to be honest. If you think how you sit on the bike, your legs are basically gonna be covering the filter for most of that shower time. So it's not gonna be something that's gonna be a problem on your riding. What we would recommend is having something waterproof if you'd think you are gonna be parking up somewhere, if you're commuting and you're leaving it outside the office, if you're going to an event and you're in the car park for a long time, if the water soaks into the pod filters at that point, it could cause you a problem. So what I do personally is I've got a couple of BMW parts bags and a couple of rubber bands. So if I know I'm gonna be parking somewhere that's gonna be wet, I just pop those on and they'll just cover them over and just make sure no water ingresses into them. Perfect. So regards to the keeping of your alarm, yes, you definitely can. So if you have an alarm unit on a Roadster model, you have to fit the battery box under the shelf. You please utilize the spacers that come in the kit. You'll have to stack the spacers too high on the right hand side bolt as you're looking at the bike. Regards the Pure, Scrambler, Urban GS or the Racer, by default you have to fit the battery box underneath because the shelf has a perimeter metal around it. So the alarm sits in that shelf and that basically that box or that cup, don't have to touch that, box goes underneath. The only one it will affect is the Roadster. If you fit the box underneath, you can keep your alarm in place. you do need to drill your tank. There's no other way of fitting this battery box unless you drill your tank. So it's another one of those sort of parts of the process that you do need to be at least competent and know that you've got a decent drill and some bits at home. All of the sizes are, we go into in depth in the tutorial. All of the information in this frequently asked questions section is based on our experience. We've fitted dozens and dozens of these blocks and we've sold hundreds of these kits. We do not have any performance data to hand. We are going to be dynoing our race bike on the uh, very shortly and that will also go onto our YouTube channel. However, this is all based on experience of fitting the kits. There we go. So that's all the queries and questions we can think of off the top of our head. I'm sure there are going to be a lot more. Please have a look at the tutorial. It's a long video, but a lot of the questions might be answered in there. If there's anything on top of that, please leave a comment in the um, comment notes on the YouTube section below, and we'll come back to them as soon as we're able to within our busy, busy workload. Very, very busy. Otherwise, very busy. grab the tools and get cracking.